we've referred back to it a few times, but Justin presented some really interesting research on platform surfing. So I'd love to hear from all of you about just how it's more challenging to reach consumers as they engage in these behaviors. What are, what are the problems that you have finding your audiences? Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, <coughs> yeah, sure. I'll go. Yeah, sure, Michael. Um, Jump just in. To, uh, I think what you're hearing today from uh, the panel is that we have uh, some pretty sophisticated and advanced uh, marketers up here who really understand the power um, where I sit, I work with a lot of different brands across a lot of different verticals, and uh, you know, it usually falls into kind of you know, th three piles, if you will, and it all kind of mirrors the, the adoption curve. And uh, early on, it's kind of reach and frequency issues. As Tim mentioned, this frequency imbalance, over frequencing you know, a specific audience or not being able to reach, as, <clears throat> as Justin talked about. And solving those problems then lead you to kind of understanding how your reach and frequency uh, curve is actually delivering results. So if you have FOMO from listening to Vinny and Shova, because it sounds like they're so far advanced, I can tell you they are way out on the leading edge of the adoption curve from the people that we work with. There are some very large marketers who are really just trying to understand you know, what's happening with this consumer shift. How are people watching TV differently? I certainly personally uh, am not from five years ago. And what is that really doing to my business? And I think you know, it's really instructive too is the ability to come back and meet with the C-suite or meet with the finance directors about how to reallocate budget. Um, and one of the things that we're hearing a lot is, and as uh, Justin showed, is the ability to prove out the ROI, whatever that ROI might be, whatever that key you know, indicator might be, to show that you know, television as a medium, sight, sound, motion, emotion, and color, really works to build brands, to move cases, to build relationships, um, you can prove it now. Uh, you bring that digital to, to I think life. that's one of the hardest um, hurdles to overcome, especially, you know, we're talking about the MMM, yeah. big brands live yeah. and die by an ROI number. When you actually look at the formula of an MMM, <laughs> it's a math equation. The cheaper you go, the higher your ROI goes, but the effectiveness is right. what's the key there. And I think that's what, you know, I've gone down a path of, for your point of measurement, we've got to talk about effectiveness, not just ROI, uh, because any OTT, FEP, any environment that our brands play in, the effectiveness is through the roof. But the ROI never totally plays out because of cost. So um, I think it's a yeah. great point, ROI and effectiveness. I mean, yeah. I think for the people in the audience, maybe just kind of dimensionalize that for everyone. The simplest way of effectiveness is revenue due to media. In my opinion, I'd rather drive revenue as a business. Um, the ROI is just an equation off of it. And um, this just sounds like such a no-brainer, doesn't it? This whole thing, it's right. like who, that's why I don't understand, and I'm not saying our agency is perfect at it, why people aren't moving faster. And I just think everyone starts every conversation with cost. Yeah. And my CPM is going to go up. And they don't look past that first metric to the metrics that matter. It's almost because, like not a stop or not even to get in the door. Yeah, because CPM. media is an expense, not an investment. Yeah. I spend my, I, I, where can I get it for less? Not where can I do something better? Yep. And I, I just think it's, it's really, it's stupid. I mean, how can you not, how can you still be investing your money the way you did 15 years ago? And I think the other thing, it's human nature, is that because my TV is quote unquote working, which it is, let me not mess with that. Let me go fix something that isn't working. So it's like you have those two things that are working against the change, which seems so obvious. It costs more per thousand and TV's working, so why mess with it? And I think those are... Those are, it's silly to not look past the obvious. Well, the, the cost thing's a, a very interesting thing because I've had several conversations, not with you guys, <laughs> in terms of uh, marketers who have uh, really low rate bases. They've been buying network television yeah. since like the 30s or something. Yeah. Hello, Hershey's one of them. Yeah. And they're totally <laughs> happy because they have their you know, single digit CPMs and yep. they're totally happy with the waste. Yep. My market is anybody with a mouth, so I'm happy with 50% also waste. Also guilty. Are you happy with the brand damage that you're doing by over frequencing that other 50%? Mm -hmm. And then I think you get into this, you know, this complex and it just makes your head spin and then uh, let's just kick the can down. When he's another another up front, let's just kick the can again. And it's taken him two years and he knows what he's talking about yeah. to, to convince those brands, those brand managers, many who are like Ivy League MBAs, yep. so they're very smart but they don't really want to change for those reasons. It yep. take, it's taken them that long to convince them to start, and now they're... Analysis. Well, yes. I'll also add another dimension to it. So, right, I mean, when I've had conversations internally, um, another facet that I'm presented with is, hey, I have not yet reached my reach threshold in social media platforms like a Facebook or a YouTube, so how do I justify yep. 
you know, a, a $28 CPM or $30 CPM versus a $350, when I'm already at my maximum reach here. Now, I certainly, I, I back very, I definitely think the argument is ad effectiveness. And I think truly in this environment, like every campaign should be backed with an ad effectiveness study because it does tell the story. It's like, what environment am I consuming my content in? Am I more receptive to brands? I think um, some of the brands have come up with creative ways, like I know Hulu has pause ads and everyone's coming up with new creative creative ways of really keeping it in a user, non-intrusive environment. And they, I was blown away by the AVOD stats just to see that number is quite, quite eye-opening. So it's really a matter of permeating that knowledge and empowering the brands you know, as we continue to do so. So, so Tim, you know, how do you deal with this challenge when you're counseling clients on how to you know, go beyond just linear TV? What are your responses to these kinds of right, objections? So it takes a number of conversations. He's one of the leaders in it. Um, follow the data, look at what the consumers are doing, invest accordingly. Um, TV's complex, whether we like it or not, you gotta lean in. It needs a platform. Um, I think you stole my line about Lumascape. Did you say something about Lumascape already? <laughs> yeah, so like TV has its own Lumascape now. Yeah. I mean, that's how complicated yeah. Yeah. it is. Uh, but, and it needs a platform. And so we have to continue to push clients to get look past the simple metrics into the things that matter because it's so obvious. I just look at this pie chart. You just take, you take a circle and you take 21% out of it and go, you're never gonna talk to any of those people in the medium that you find among the most, if not most powerful. You're gonna go over oh, the first 21. Is that really what you wanna do? And so, I don't know, it, it sounds, again, sounds simple, but it's, it's a constant push it's nothing, we don't have any, we don't make any more money. It's not about us. It's about driving your, your change. And, and uh, it's, it's a constant push of all, all of our teams to do that. But uh, simple things like that, I don't know, that's really it. By the way, going 0 for 21, it's not just 0 for 21 against the universe. I mean, we've taken, you know, we have obviously the largest data set in, in television. We can do really fine measurements, but we've also taken it, we've pushed it through, you know, demographics. You're not only 0 for 21 against you know just everything on on basis. You're 0 for 21 against the younger people. You know the the, yeah, the you that, that 21% yeah. is not just doesn't demographically right. look like the country. It skews right. younger. It's it skews actually, more urban. It's yeah. interesting you bring that up. There's actually the 21%. The median age in a recent Roku study that I, I was looking at was actually 47. Yeah. So I you're missing the mix of both mm -hmm. younger and Tantalism. frankly this middle 35 to 54 group is actually starting to cut the cord yeah. and become more savvy. So it's a mix of both. I think in your spot on the 18 to 34 is even bigger of that pie that we're missing out, especially as chocolate and brands. So it's yeah. totally cool. You have your single digit CPMs and you get that. You know, I think Tim, the interesting question is for, for you as you talk across a lot of your clients and start convincing is, you know, what's the in-target CPM, right? I mean, that's the beautiful thing about targeted television is it's a CPM against your target, right? Whatever that target might be. And it's not kind of an apples for apples comparison, is it? Yeah, and you gotta get out there fast. I mean, think about with all the streaming companies coming on, how much, how much quicker that, that group, that 21% is gonna get the 30% and 40%. I mean, what do you think that number is gonna be in three to five years? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna be 50%, higher. I don't know, pick a number. Because with, with all the, the new content options, it's gonna, it's gonna, those are catalysts to further cord cutting. And so anyone who's not, and I, I just think, and Vinny's doing it, he's fast walking into this, you know, crawl, walk, run. He's not crawling, he's into, he's gotten his brands to fast walk. And people who start with a crawl and then, oh, there was a variable, it didn't work, I'm busy, that's done, I'm not gonna do that, TV already works for me. Like, I think brands have to get into fast walk, they gotta walk, you gotta stop. This isn't a crawl, this is a walk into a run. And if you don't, I think it's a mistake.